How you doing, buddy? Still here. Good. That's doing good. You doing good? Yeah, we're still hey, here. Good to see you. Yeah, thank you. Good. <laughs> You're an elder now, huh? Yeah, 77. Jeez. Yeah. You look good. Yeah. How you feeling? Decent. Good. Decent. Good. Keeping busy? Yeah, very busy. What are you working on these days? All kinds of projects. I'm Keep doing an auction house right now. You already have auctions. Where? On Lover's Lane. Poor Lover's Lane. Ooh. That keeps what kind busy. of what, what are we talking for? for Households. Household stuff? Yeah. You like like with the other guys. Anything and everything. No, not they do mostly antiques. I'm just gonna have run of the mill. When is this gonna open? Next year. Good to know. That's a drop. Yeah, it's good to know. Yeah. So how do people get in contact with you if they want to get rid of stuff? I'm around everywhere. So They're all they all Mr. Go right now. Yeah. Okay. You you are a visiting nurse? No, I'm a home health aide. Okay. So, so we go around to people's houses and take care of them and provide services with personal care or homemaking or whatever they might need. Oh, that's good. And um, is it a state-run um, we're, actually, we're actually hired out through Medicare and elder service and things like that and oh. private care side. Okay. So um, we're run out of... We're part of the Vineyard Nursing Association. We came over and um, opened up our Nantucket, so it's kind of like a brother. I see. So. So, how many people do you actually take care of on the island? On the vineyard. Um, oh, you're on the vineyard? We run both. We, okay. We do both. Vineyard do you know and how many on the Nantucket though? 78. 78 people. So what does that entail? Does it, do you stay there or do you... There, no, we, we it's do only home day. visits. The nurses go and visit, the therapists go and visit, or the aides go and visit and help somebody with their bath or making a meal or getting dressed. So is the idea to try to keep people in their home for as it long is. as possible? It is. Absolutely. That, absolutely. We try to keep people independent and safe in their home for as long as they possibly can. And the, diff the services that we provide make a big difference. If you just can't get yourself dressed or you can't make your own meal, but otherwise you're cognitively fine to be home alone, um, it's great to be able to stay home and we can help you do that. What about the family members? I mean, family how are they... members help, but you know something? The, the Cape and Islands is very much part of that sandwich generation that we hear so much about where somebody that's in their 40s and 50s has, is still raising their children and they're working, but they're also trying to help their parents. So they're kind of sandwiched in between their parents and their children. And that happens, the, the percentages of that on the Cape and Islands is huge. So there's lots of elders sort of aging in place, as we call it, at home. And these services help people stay home. And how do people, do, how do they pay for it? They're, um, all insurances will pay for home care. All, all insurances will pay for home care. We also will bill privately if somebody um, wants to do that. Okay. So there's lots and lots of different ways to pay for it. You can refer yourself. You can just call the VNA and say that you want some help, and we'll send a nurse out to see what it is that we can help you with. Your doctor can call. Your church member can call. Um, your family member can call. Anybody can call. Can you have somebody just come out once a week? Absolutely. It can I mean, be it's once not a, a daily week. Thing. It can be once a week, it can be once a day, it can be for several hours a day, it can be just for an hour. If you need a ride to a doctor's appointment, if you need us to take you to Boston to a doctor's appointment, you can hire us to do all of those things. All right, so if somebody out there is listening and they, they want to help, they want to be a, get your help, how do they get in contact? They get in touch with us by dialing 508-825-8300. That's the best place to start? That's our phone number. Okay. 508 825-8300. Do they have to see their doctor about this or is this something they can Not talk to, to start you? with. Okay. We'll take care of all of that for you. And and it doesn't cost anything in the beginning or does no, it? No, not if your insurance covers it. No. Okay. No, it's part of a wonderful Medicare benefit. There, there you go again, saying wonderful in Medicare in the same sentence. <laughs> well, in home care, it works. I don't have an opinion about the rest of it, Listen, but in home care, it works. If you're on your own, awesome. you know, if you're on your own without Medicare, the least thing we can do is help somebody. Absolutely, out. absolutely. Come on. We're happy to help. Well, it's uh, breast and bone density is what we're promoting today. Oh, okay. Today. Our imaging department, this is Tina Maloney, yes. this is our imaging department. All right. Yes. Um, so tell, tell me, why are we promoting it? Why um, do we need well, to promote next it? month is Breast Awareness Month, yeah. so we're offering a free clinic next month for mammograms, and um, it's just very important for women to get their is it, I mean, mammograms you, you, I done every year. Maybe it isn't as important to get a mammogram. They're, 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 there's some 
it's better. I mean, it's best to be detected early. So yes. you know, with any Absolutely. with any cancer, and it's Mayor, better to err on the side. I just heard about of... a woman who had dense breasts. Who's that writer? That famous writer. Uh, I forgot her name, but she writes these amazing books. She's never smoked. She exercises all the time. It's not in her family. And they did a mammogram. And if she hadn't done the mammogram, they wouldn't have found her. Right. right. Exactly. exactly. A lot of times. I mean, because her breasts were are dense. And yes. You can't always see. Yes. Them. Well, right. Well, they came out with digital mammography, which really picked up a lot of stuff on mammograms that weren't picked up before with analog. Yeah. And now they have something new to uh, tomosynthesis, which um, it kind of takes slices of the breast now, and that's even better in detecting um, breast cancer. And have we? Is it on the rise? Is breast cancer increasing? Is it? It depends on what. It depends on what you're um, what you're measuring it against. Um, I don't know if it's on the rise any more than any other cancer, um, but I mean, it, it can but affect everyone. With, with more awareness and more people be, being screened or having access to screening, yes. we're probably seeing more cases being detected well, early. You see so. more ca cases in different areas. I mean, yes. why do you keep hearing in Sandwich that they have more cancer rates than right, maybe right. over here? What I hear in the environment, uh, certain areas, of the, you know, are uh, more prone for some reason. I don't know. They say over there it's because of the Air Force Base. That's right. I don't, you know, I don't know how true that I is. I know it's hard to know. Like, but what? that's not only true with breast cancer. I mean, you were talking about uh, someone who didn't have it, the writer who didn't have it in her family. I mean, women get lung cancer that never, never smoked, smoked right. never been exposed to right. anything, right. and they have lung cancer. Right. I mean... Um, so it just all depends. So get get over there and get a mammogram yearly, yearly, yearly. Yes. And what? How do they do? They call you up or do they schedule they with their doctor? They should go through their doctor, all right. primary yes. care physician. Yes. Okay. And we also one thing you should know, which we've been talking about since the beginning of July, we have a new phone number that we've been really promoting for access for primary care services, which is MD Access, and it's um, it's our phone number here. 508-825-1000. Oh, need a doctor on Nantucket, huh? Correct. So that's a real great source for linking people that might not have primary care service right. on Nantucket sure. to find a, uh, someone to take care of them. Well, and how many MDs do we have now? On we the have two new physicians right, that have come that. on board. Dr. Steinmuller is a family practice doctor. So she's a, a, a so primary we have those care. Two, we've got Lepre. What do we have about? Dr. Keane, Dr. Pearl, right. Dr. Butterworth. So that's yes. it. Five, six. Correct. Correct. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, actually, a few things. Nantucket and Island Pharmacy. Um, Island Pharmacy where I work at and then also I'm here as the president for the Center of Elder Affairs as well too who's oh. one of the key sponsors for this event that's going on. Okay, so uh, as far as the pharmacy, you're just here to... Just here to assist people, you know, if they've got any questions that come up or anything, we're happy to assist them wherever we can. Yes. Um, so it's, you know, we're, we're there. We're there, 24-7. We try to do the best thing we can for them. And you're, you're, so you're the president of the council, uh, council on Aging? Uh, actually for the Center for Elder Affairs. Okay. And That's different. it's very funny. People say Council on Aging, Center for Elder Affairs, always think of us like the friends of. Well, aren't they, they the same? They're very different, as a matter of fact. The Council on Aging is appointed by the town. And essentially, they're there to see the over, to do really the overview of the senior needs in the community and make the town and the selectmen aware of what needs to happen. They also help us as well, too, in guiding what has to happen in Salt Marsh. Being the friends of, again, you know how town funding goes at this point. So we're there to assist wherever we can on a financial aspect to make a lot of things happen for the seniors in the community. And how is that? When, with the budget cuts and everything else, how has that been affecting? You know what? People are really generous. It never ceases to amaze me. But again, too, we've got to be active in the community as well, too. Um, as a matter of fact, there's a few things coming up. There's the John Butcher concert, which is coming up on the 16th. 
um, at the Congregational Church. That's a fundraiser that we're going to wind up doing. He's, if you've never heard him, fantastic pianist. Uh, he's really great. On the 30th, we have um, a cabaret. Nancy Tyra has decided to come on out and help us and assist with doing that. The cabaret, the lady is absolutely wonderful, will be at the Great Harbor Yacht Club. On the 30th, again, another fundraiser we're trying to do, and then we've got a game night coming up at Sherman Commons in October. So instead of funding, instead of the, the old-fashioned way of funding through the government and the town, we're, we're result, having to resolve right. this, you know, And this, this is what it's all about. It's private-public partnership to try to make things happen, so... Do you think that's the, the future, the way things... I mean, you're on a lot of boards. I, what do you think of this? Um, private-public partnerships work at times, but I think you also have to be cautious, too, about what the private entity is bringing to the table. Yeah. For as many good relationships I've seen, I hate to say it, I've also seen ones as well, too, where if you just farm it out to a private instead of individuals, you also lose control as well, too. Government should be involved. That's I think that's one of the key emphases, is taking care of the people. Yeah, right. You know.